Hello, and thank you for joining me on this guided project. Uh, we're going to do a data analysis of the economy of Sri Lanka. The data set, the links are here. And if you have any questions, send me messages, all that stuff, all my links and stuff. Okay, so let's upload the data. So we go to our libraries, and we're going to load the data right from my repository on GitHub. So I'll no download in the CSV. And there we go. So we'll check out df.info. We have a lot of objects in our in our data set, which seems weird because when we look at this, well, it should it should be numeric. The problem is pretty obvious. We have percent, uh, billion dollar cents. We've got a lot of cleaning up to do to be able to use these numbers and do any sort of analysis. Here. So good practice for us today. And then we're going to do some cool plots for these. Okay, so pre-processing, and we're so we're going to remove the percent sign symbol here. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put a list of all the percent sign features, uh, the percentage features into a per feature, percent features, uh, and we're going to do a loop with that, that column. So list, and we'll go four feet in per feet in this list. We're going to go DF feet string replace. And so this is kind of when the way this works is when string is going to, when it's going to turn into a number, when you remove this symbol or whatever, you have to use string. It kind of like keeps it as a number. And then what you can do after the, is then turn it into change the data type back. So this is kind of ensures that it is a number going in and, or sorry, is a string going in and going out uh, so that the function works. Uh, it seems a little bit weird that it has to be that way, but that's the way it works. So. And it's just good to remember. So if it's going to be a number after you remove a variable, you have to use string to maintain it as a string and use the function of a of dot replace. Uh, and then you would have to turn it into a string after. So that's what we're going to do here. So string replace, and we're going to place the null values with actual null values so they don't mess up our analytics. And we're going to change the data type to a field. So, so run that loop. And there we go. And we're going to check the data type now. We should see we have some floats now we got some some of our data set cleaned up okay so good. and what do we need to do next so we will do the dollar sign and billion dollar sign billion symbol uh and remove both of those so get the list same thing as we do make it make a list of the values that have these and really just doing this manually inspecting this and seeing uh, which values have e there's not too many so it's quick and easy to do we'll go then for uh we'll create a list of those features and we're gonna go four feet in dollar feet, which we create up above, and we'll go string replace on the column, the series, and we'll basically write over that series, replace it over, and we'll go string replace. And as I said up before, it's kind of when you, you need to take out, when you take out the symbol, it's gonna make a number you have to use string to kind of maintain. I don't simply know exactly why the function works that way, but that's what you have to do. Uh, and that's just kind of good to help you remember because sometimes we get dot replace not working and it's because you got to use dot string dot replace to kind of maintain the stringness uh, of the variable coming in and the function. Again, that is a little bit weird, but that's how it works. Okay. And so we'll do that and we'll look at the dot info. We should see now everything is, well, not everything, uh, almost everything is put into change. We have population, so we'll change population to an int. Now, this is pretty easy because all we have is the uh, comma sign, so we'll just replace that with zero and we'll change the data type so as type to an integer root. Now, if we look at the dot info, we have all numeric data type. Awesome. Okay. What we're going to do here is just look at the histogram. So, we're going to bin, bin these variables. So, we're going to turn them into, I, I thought it would be interesting, especially with Seaborn. I kind of identified this as I was going through it and I came back up to my workflow and process this up here. But the reason that it, it's good to kind of identify which variables you want to inspect by with the hue argument in Seaborn specifically. So we'll be able to separate our categories. And I just thought GDP and inflation were two interesting economic uh, factors that we would do that. So we're going to bin that. So we're going to take the max and min value. We're going to put the min uh, list. We're going to do cut and we'll put the bins into the BINS, the list that we created. And we're going to take one less than the bin value to get the uh, 
Because if you think about it, if one bin would have two outside edges, so four, four bins is going to have uh, five outside edges. Uh, yeah, four bins, you have one less label than bins. So four bins would have five outside labels. So you need one more bin than you have labels. So let's do that. That's bin information. Right, let's bin this one together. So we'll plug up the histogram. Just a good idea because we're going to do this manually and figure out how to set these. So we're going to get the max value. We're going to get the min value of the column. And then we're going to send this to max v, min v. So max value, min value. We create our list and we'll go min value. And then we'll go max in here for our list. We're then going to go, we're going to return the column. And this is a little bit different than as you see, it's not the column select column dot the function, it's pd dot cut. We select the whole series, but we're gonna give this, so we're gonna select the column and we're gonna give it the bins that we want. And then we want our labels, again, to be one less. So we're gonna go everything from the start of the thing up to, but not including the last value. So negative one right here, click, click this, and get, our, get our values into it. This could be a very, uh, valuable technique just to inspect, especially with Seaborn, it, it fits very naturally into uh, higher level analytics. It really goes a little bit deeper than things you'd be able to do in Excel. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to sort the data for it because this is not in the right order. So this is 21, 20, I should say that it's not in chronological, which is kind of in descending order. To work with the functions, functions naturally think that First date is at the top and last date is at the bottom. So we're just going to switch this around. So we're going to go df.sort underscores, sort underscore values, and we're going to go ascending, or sorry, in place, in place equals true. Okay, so we'll sort our data frame now. And we can see if we were to inspect this, we can see that it is now in as ascending order okay so now we could plot the, one of the functions we'll use we'll need it to be in this order to to work with the function so here what we're going to do is we're going to set a color palette just to be a little bit uh more interesting than boring uh the, well, i mean seaboard makes beautiful plots beautiful colors but you know you get bored of them after a while so i like to set a palette so i'm just going to call it pal to make it nice and short and here we're going to find five colors. What you can do is go to color mind, color mind, great website to make them. And you just show you the colors generate. It's an AI generated thing as well. Very seaborn colors right here, actually. So I uh, must know that I'm working on a day. Uh, and so anyway, it's a great website to make your palettes. If you make a palette from there, just go there and pick, you know, a few colors and we'll use this as we go through today to make it a little bit more unique and a little bit different than the standard. Okay, so here what we're going to do, you, you'll notice here is we have two different axes on the x, two different scales. So one is the population percentage change and one is the population. So these are two on two different scales. So we're going to plot them on different sides, uh, split the axis here, and then we'll plot both of those. So it gets, get, gets a nice effect and we'll have fun with making uh, more than one Value. So here what we're going to do is, sorry, with kind of combined blinding plots today. So here what we'll do is AX large L, I just like to do this to kind of keep track of this, because a small L doesn't, is not really very uh, file, but large L, but this is the axis left. This will be our left axis to keep track of these. And what we're going to do, we're going to take that left axis, so we're going to go twin X, twin X, and then that's going to create axis right. So. You know, normally, I don't normally write in camel, uh, I think it's called camel plot, but I don't write that way normally, but I like to keep the R and L just to keep track of those as we go through our work today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go SNS line plot, and we're going to set this to our left axis right here in the population. And we're going to go color pal. So color is when we get, we're changing one color here. So we're going to go color, and then what we're going to do in the next one is we're going to go scatter plot. Got to plot this, but this is going down here. It's a nice little dot. It's got to got a little effect with that. And data frame X is year, Y is pop change, hue is pop change. So it's going to, as it goes down, it gets lighter. And then we're going to set the palette because we're not changing just one color. We're changing a C map, uh, a range of colors. So we need a palette. So 
we'll, we'll generate a palette here, and so we'll go light underscore palette. And the cool thing that you can do here is just give it a color, and it'll make a palette from this. So we'll give pal the last item from the list, and we'll go as c map equals true. Okay. And here we're gonna go plot equals legend, and we're gonna go location right center, and then the title of this plot is gonna be percentage, and then the title of our overall graphic is gonna be population growth of Sri Lanka. Okay. So now we got a nice. Super nice plots. And we need to change our weight. Sorry, I missed that. And we also need to define our palette. We got to spell font weight, right? And there we go. There we go. We got our little plot now and font weight. Uh, beautiful. So here we got we got a nice title and a nice little plot. So a little bit of extra work to do a nice plot, but yeah, cool. So when you're building kind of these combination plots, it just makes sense too. You can delete these after if you're not interested in them. I left them just to show how I built these. Just kind of looking at every every column one at a time. So doing a seaborne line plot, data equals DF, X, Y. Again, I got, X is usually here the time series, so everything really is on our day. So this is our year, and so do the same thing. And here's the growth percentage change. So you can see this is not scaling; it kind of goes up and down. You can see really in the last few years, there's been a huge drop in uh, the GDP. Really not looking so good anymore. Okay. So here, what we're going to do is we'll do another combination plot. This looks really cool. And so what we'll do here is plt dot subplot is equal to fig xl left axis go left axis twin x and this will create axis bar or right axis and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the line plot the axis here is equal to the left axis choose a palette here we're going to put lines are really only one color so we'll just choose it from pal number one or second position or second palette color and then what we're going to do here is we're going to do a scatter plot next scatter plot and here what we're going to do is we can see we do a dark palette in this one right here and fit again with the color here and that just makes it a little bit dark you got a little bit light when i use the light palette here so and then the next thing that we'll do is a line plot okay line plot and then our color is going to eat two palettes and then position number three we'll set plot legends then the location, so LOC is equal to upper left, plot.title is equal to the growth, and then our font size is equal to 18. Oh, and I forgot up here, CMAP equals, oh no, that's, that's true, I got confused by the colors. And it's not PAL, I like this, I like using cool, I always get these colors in still, you get the highlighting when you make a mistake. My palette of colors is not called palette, it's called PAL, and so just a little bit extra typing there. Uh, and so here, Subplot line. Do that mistake a lot, but it's subplots, not subplot. Uh, everyone makes mistakes. Uh, and so there we go. We got a cool looking plot and fun, fun to play around with these combination plots. So let's do this again. We'll go XR, or sorry, fig axis left plot dot subplot fig size size and then here we're going to do the twin x but it would be good to practice this as much as possible because it's not something you do every day so lx axis left twin x and then we got our axis right side as well here what we're going to do is we're doing a line plot so this is only one color so we'll do color equals to one color of the palette then the next one we're going to do a scatter plot and you can notice that this is changing color so here we, we don't need to set this to color we need to set this to and then we're going to use a dark palette. And we're going to give it one color, one color code. And we're going to set this as map equals true. And then we can have our nice color C map, and it looks really good. And we can generate our own color palettes, which is just awesome. Okay, we're going to do a line plot, 
line plot next, and this is only one color, so we'll just do color, and so that's true. We're gonna go legend, create a legend, and we're gonna set the title equal to percentage change, and then we're going to set the font is two folds of the title. And always gotta make sure you spell things correctly, and so mark with a K, and there we go. Okay, got a nice block. Here, just I could look at the min value of that one. Here, just for some practice, data equals df in the line plot. Data equals is kind of really common, seaborn syntax, and it's just really good to get used to. You don't need to do it on every single one of the plots. You can just put df in the first position. It doesn't work on everyone, so this is a good idea to put data equals df on every single one. You'll avoid mistakes. And so here, x and x equals year, y equals growth rate. Next one, line plot. And always is good to inspect them because I wanted to figure out how to put these together in a plot, which ones would make sense to see together. So here we're going to do something a little bit different because we're going to create a legend, but this is not going to be a default property of Seaborn because it's going to be two different lines. It's not going to be a hue argument that naturally creates that, that legend for us. So here what we're going to do is matplotlib import dot, sorry, matplotlib dot lines import line capital L line to capital D line to D and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom lines variable that's going to be a list of this function so line to D and this is going to create our little lines on our legend so this will help us create our legend in order to give them a line width of four so we're creating the two dimensions color equals and we're choosing our two palette colors and then our line width is four and so we'll run that and then what we do here is when we down we create our legend here we'll go plt dot legend and what we'll do is we're going to give it this custom lines variable that we created up above and then we're going to go There we go. And so it made sure to inspect them first to find out which two plots would go together. And we just wanted to see really if there was a similarity in the GNI and the GNI per capita. And really you can see these are tracking each other really well. Okay. So here we can see subplots. We're going to do subplots. We're going to do our splitting of the axes. We're going to do line plots. And then we're going to go AX equals our left axis. And then we'll do line plot again. And AX equals our right axis for this. But that plot right there. So do a line plot pretty handy. And again, having the ability to do this custom lines object with the 2D lines in Matplotlib is pretty simple after you get used to it, but it is pretty handy to do that. So just to get some super basic practice, what we'll do here is SNS.line plot, and we're looking at the government debt, SNS.line plot as well. We have to practice a little bit of everything, try to mix up as we go through this. Uh, we're going to use again that that 2D line function that we imported. So we're going to go line to D, and we're going to go color palette. So again, selecting from our palette that we created it in the first uh, section. So line to D. We're going to color palette. Or something like that. So here, what we'll do in the next one is we'll create our subplot. So we'll go fig, and then we're creating access left and so those, this, this is this would be our left axis we're going to split twin and so we're going to go axis l twin x it's going to create the right axis so this one start with the left axis and here we're going to go axis right okay and then we'll plot that and so two little line plots pretty simple but it's really interesting that you can see percentage debt change and annual change in debt ratio it's amazing that these diverged a little bit kind of you know, a few years before times got pretty rough in insurance. It's very interesting. Uh, and it would be something for us to investigate a little bit later. So you, I think it would be good to read these observations. Forgot to go over them uh, as we've been going through this, focusing on the coding. But they're really good to read through and really just understand. And the insights that you get from looking at this data on your own are just really, really interesting. And it gives you a lot more to kind of, kind of lead you down a rabbit hole because you're like, okay, well, I'll kind of investigate what happened here and why this happened. Okay, but it's good just to collect these as you go through your observations, compile them down at the end. Okay, here we're going to create as our subplots. We're going to go here, we're going to go SNS. So let's create our custom lines 
plot right here. Okay, and we're gonna go line plot. So here, let's show what we're looking at first. We're gonna create this cool kind of line plots with scatter. These are scatter plots with little dots as we go through. Let's just get, get a little bit of a different effect. So line plot, and here we're gonna go. We're only have line plots from one place. So we go color. I go scatter plot. So unlike in the other ones, we changed the palette. We're only doing one color here. There's no palette. There's no C map. There's no hue to this. So we're just going to also set the color of the units. And we want to set the size equal to 100. We get nice big fat kind of circles. Uh, and then just to kind of burn effect, and then we want to do line plot here. And we're going to set the color of this. What is again only one color? We're going to do a scatter plot. Scatter plot. And we're going to set the size to 100 as well. I tried with smaller. I didn't actually think it looked that good, but you can play around with that. And color equals power. Just kind of diff different effect. In our legend, again, we're going to give it the two because this is not a hue that's making these two different lines. We need to identify them ourselves. So we'll give it our custom line object that we created up above. And we're again going to set the loc, the location to the upper left. Perfect. And there we go. And again, you'll notice these deviations, and it's very, very interesting to kind of think about and, and compare them with other plots. And I, I try to always highlight them. You can see I, I the two ast apost or no asterisks. I make them bold. And so I would collect the bold ones as I go through this and just kind of collect them and really see if there's an insight into it. Okay. So here we're going to do pair plots. And we're going to look at bivariate analysis. I think we really did a good job of inspecting everything individually or, or really kind of one group by itself. But let's do uh, pair plots. It's always good to inspect things bivariately. So we'll do And we're going to go data df. And we're going to give it this list of nom features, nom nominal features that we put in. So there's nominal about year, population, GDP. So the nominal features, obviously. So we'll look for there's a correlation in between those two. Okay, in the next one we're going to, while that's running, in the next one we're going to do the same thing. Uh, with the two features that we binned, I wanted to inspect across this and see really if those features really made a difference, those bins, and that would give us some insights here. What's interesting is they didn't, which I would have thought GDP would have had some obvious pattern with one of the variables. I chose GDP, I have my CFA, I just I felt like I was pretty sure about that. Turned out not to be the case. But I still wanted to show you, we inspected this, but you can really see there's no clear separation is a clear identifier except for inflation right here where it's very clear that there is a separation by color you can tell the other ones aren't right we can inspect the correlations here and all those things that we could see with the blue one but again this is to inspect uh the bins of the range of inflation so if there really something different it seems to be that no so it's still worthwhile to inspect it i wanted to show that and did the same thing with our gdp argument here as well our gdp bin and again I wouldn't say there's very much here, and you can see where there's the GDP. You can see it does the good, you know, we'd hopefully hope to see some pattern like this somewhere else here, but you can really see there is no really distinguishable pattern in, in any of the rows. You can see there is a correlation, there's a relationship between two variables, but not with uh, GDP or with inflation, which again surprised me, but it is what it is. Okay, so, and then just confirming the correlations here, but there was some. The correlations with GDP, GNI, uh, G, GNP are really high, and some more correlations here. Okay? And so, going through this, so we'll do another pair plot. And we're gonna data equals DF per capita, and we're gonna set the kind equals to reg. And if we run that, we'll get the linear regressions right here. These nice little plots. And you can see there is some the per capita GDP and the GNI per capita have a good strong relationship. So that's no surprise because we saw that they have a stronger nominal relationship as well. So doing a pair plot in our next one here, and we're gonna do kind equals reg and bin equals our bins that we created up above and our palette equals power. And in the next one down here, we're going to do palette. Spell that correctly. Palette equals pal. And here what I'm doing is I'm starting from the first one. I'm skipping over position zero, one, and then to the end of this. And so this would 
one minus cards, so we get the right amount for the rinse. And so I like, I like that pallet argument or setting a pallet variable, it's just really just easy, easy to do. And then I do this again for the ratios, the rate of change, the percentage change features, and really again looking for relationships. Again, the, the correlations are pretty obvious to see there are some strong stronger correlations in, in lots of these features, especially with the nominal values that we saw up above. But if we inspect by the again by the inflation or the memory was so I should do we're gonna do SNS, pair plot, data equals DF, kind equals reg, and bins this inflation. And then our palette, which is even more than one color, is equal to so as I was saying, uh, I didn't want to code and talk. <laughs> And what we're going to do here is really there isn't a strong noticeable pattern. I really wasn't, I don't feel like I was able to identify anything specific uh, that was interesting about using the Q argument in, in Seaborn to inspect the by the growth or by the um, inflation values. Now, I, I would still really recommend this technique because it just it works so well for me many, many times. But in this one, it didn't. So as I was talking, I was just doing the pair plot, data equals df, and kind equals reg, palette equals palette. Okay, so we are good. Done that one as well. So that was our workbook for today. A little bit more fun with, with uh, Seaborn today. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.